Okay, so I think the best way to do this uh, by hand is to actually create a table for for x and f, and that way we can just pick whatever we need from the table. So I'm going to make a table. Uh, before that, let's figure out what the step size of the grid points would be. So n is equal to six. Here a equals zero. This is the lower uh, the lower number in the integral. B is the upper limit, so it's one. Delta x is b minus a divided by n. That will be one minus zero divided by six. So I think point one six six seven. Now the grid points x are given by a plus i times delta x, where i will go from zero. Uh, one, two, three all the way to well, four, five, six, because n is six. So what we get here is x equals a, a would be zero, i times delta x, so i is 1.1667, then we have two times 0 0.1667, so three, 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 three. Three, three, then we'll have 0 0.5, 0 0.6667, 0 0.8333, and 1. 6.1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Okay, yeah, so let's create that table and we'll go from there. Once you have the table, it's fairly straightforward to use those four rules. Yeah, I'll intentionally create a horizontal table that way we'll have space to refer the table. So we have X and then we have F of X, which is X squared. So zero, when you put x square of uh, zero square is zero. Then we have 0.1667. So if we just square it, it comes out to be 0 0.0278. Next is 0 0.3333. Square of that is 0 0.1111. Next is 0.5, square of that we know is 0.25. Next one is 0.6667, square of that is 0 0.4444. Then we have 0 0.8333, that's 0 0.6944. And lastly, we have one, square of one is one. Okay, just to make our life easy, I'm going to extend this uh, table and give these uh, f values some names, f0, f1, f2, f3, f4, f5, 6. Okay, this will help us to interpret them when we write the formula down. Okay, now let's start with the rectangular rule. Okay, there are actually two ways of applying the rectangular rule. If you go back, it is, these are the two formulas. In one formula, you start from i equals zero. So F zero, F one, F through, all the way to N minus one. So in here is six, so you'll go from zero all the way to five. Or you can use this one, it's the same index, but here you go fi plus one. So I'll use both of them. So one way of doing this is delta x 
F0 plus F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5. Another way of writing it down is, I'll call that I2, is delta X F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus F5 plus F6. Okay, so the advantage of writing it down in terms of F is that now you can just read off from that table what you need to sum. So you just take the, take the right F values from the table, sum them up and then multiply with delta X. Note that delta X is 0 0.1667. It's, it's on the previous page. So if you sum this up, you get I1 comes out to be 0 0.2546. I2 comes out to be 0 0.4213. Okay, so rectangular rule produces two answers. One usually is in a, a lower order approximation, one is a up, upper approximation. What it means is the actual area is actually in between the two. Two, trapezoidal rule. Okay, here what we do is, we just go back to that formula. Here, this is the trapezoidal rule formula. Uh, you can see from this, expand this out. That's one way to do it. But you could also look at, you have the formula here. I have it here. F0 plus twice F1 plus twice F2 and then Fn. So only the first and the last ones don't have a two in it. The remaining everything has two. So that might be an easier way of writing it down. So we just go back to this and just write it that way. Delta X divided by two. The first one has a has no two in it. But then we have, Two for F one, F two, F three, F four, F five, and the last one doesn't have a two in it. So again, if you sub in the values, so obviously you'll go for, go to the table, you put in the values, and what comes out is point three three eight zero. Third one, Simpson, one third tool. Yeah, so again, we go back to that. Uh, we have two ways of doing this. One is we look at the formula. I think it's here. Yeah, this is the formula. Uh, well, not this one, sorry. This one, right? This is the formula. And sometimes I think people find that hard for to do it. You'll have to evaluate it. But you could also use uh, what we came up with, right? We came up with this formula. So F0, and remember, this is only goes to, uh, wait, can you even do it? Well, is N even? N is six, so we can actually use this. Actually, I chose six so that you can do it with the Simpson's rule. So we can do this. We need to, however, stop at uh, N equals six. So we can maybe use, I think it might be easiest to use the formula. So we need to use uh, this formula. So it'll be F zero plus F six. And then we'd have to do one, three, five, and two and four, right? One, three, five, and two and four. We go here and then we write it down. So delta x divided by three, f0 plus f6. The first and last term don't have anything, any index in front of it. Then we have. Did I get the right? What's going on? So then there'll be four times 
F1 plus F3 plus F5. I said 135, so we put 135. And then we have two times uh, F2 and F4. So I3, after subbing in the values, comes out to be, let's call that I4. I4 comes out to be 0 0.3333. Fourth one, Simpsons, 3 8th rule. So we have I5 equals 3 8th of delta X. And then we need to have, we need to figure out what F should appear here. So go back to the formula. I think is here. So here we have to stop at six. So the first one, the last one, by the way, first of all, is n a multiple of three? It is six is a multiple of three. So zero and n, n will be six. So everything between zero and six should be here. So one, four, we should take the one and four because they're less than six. We can't take seven because seven is greater than six and we need to use three. So there will be one and four appearing here and then three appearing in the inside the two. So using that, we can write F0 plus three times F1 plus F2 plus F4 plus F5 plus twice F3 plus F6. Okay, again, using the formula and the values in the table, you get 0.333. Okay, one more thing and, and we, are, we are done. Uh, we need to also compare this against analytical calculation because f of x equals x square can be analytically integrated. So let's do that. Okay, yeah, so the last thing is the analytical calculation. So we have r equals zero to one x square dx. The integral of x square is x cubed divided by three. Upper limit is one, lower limit is zero. This comes out to be one third minus zero divided by three, which is one third. So let's call that, I think I six, or if we call that I analytic is 0 0.3333. So this is the true answer. And we can, if you can go back, we can see that it actually is the same answer we get using Simpson's one third and the Simpson's three eighth rule. Uh, these rules are not so accurate. This is the only first two decimal places, while this one is just way off, right? Clearly, yeah. Ready? Okay, so uh, we're doing numerical integration where we are trying to approximate integrals using polynomials, right? And so we looked at a couple of ways to do that, trapezoidal, rectangular, Simpson rule. We also solved a problem last class where uh, we were asked to compute integral x squared dx and we saw how to apply all those rules. Uh, now, the good thing about these problems was that you could decide what the grid size would be, right? You chose, we chose n equals six. That means that we got the grid size, this, this thing x here, which then informed the table. And you can say that the x is equally spaced, which is nice. Now, every time, uh, anytime you need to do integration with data, you'll see that sometimes data is not available like the way you want it. Like for example, in this case, it's basically a piston cylinder system. So the, the pressure in the, the piston is measured and it measure it is measured at different displacements, which is X, but the data X, which is the 
independent variable, which is the integration uh, about which we're going to integrate, is not equispaced. We have 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So you see, there's no 0 0.3. Within this 0.5, then there's suddenly 0 0.8. There's no 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. Right. Uh, so, how do you take data like this and use that to do integration? That's this question. That's what this question is about. Okay. Any ideas how we might be able to solve this? Can you make a guess? Best. Best. That's actually a very good suggestion. What you could do is you could take the data zero through one find a curve which passes through all those points, okay? That will give you points. It will actually help you to fill the table. It will give you what is the value at point three. It will give you what the value of point six is and point seven is, right? Because once you have the curve, you can use that curve to interpolate data. That's one way of doing it, okay? But the other way is, any other way to do it? With what we have, without doing any curve fitting. So another way is we sort of use these rules uh, as we seem fit. So for example, uh, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, those are three data points. When you have three data points, what is the most accurate curve we can use? It turns out that the more higher the order is, so Simpson's uh, 3 8 is more accurate than 1 third, then more accurate than trapezoidal, more accurate than rectangular. So if we know that Simpson only works if there are three uh, data points. So maybe we can use Simpson for the range 0 to 0 0.2 because we have three data points, the Simpson's one third rule. But then from 0.2 to 0.4, we can change over to, uh, well, we have two choices here, rectangular and trapezoidal, but trapezoidal is more accurate than rectangle. So we'll use uh, trapezoidal rule. Then when you go to 0.4, then we have 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So again, we'll have to use the trapezoidal rule. And then 0 0.5, 0 0.8, again, trapezoidal. Then 0 0.8, 0 0.91, again, we have the luxury of three data points. So we can use Simpson. So it's sort of using those two methods. Of course, we could also try the, the curve fit method. It will also uh, is, a, is a way of solving the problem. For some problems like this, uh, there is no... Uh, there is no right and wrong. You could use either of those methods in, in the real world. Uh, and the only way to check this is if you have experiments, you can check it, check it out, right? If you have more data, then maybe you'll be able to make a check on the calculations. So let's use this method, which we just talked about. We split the interval and try to use different rules. So since there are data points, we will use Simpson's one-third rule. Uh, the Simpson's one-third rule is dx divided by 3, f0 plus 4, f1 plus f2. Here you can see dx is 0 0.1, f0 is 4, F1 is 4.23 and F2 is 4.53. Yeah. Yeah, question. Why are we using 1/3? 3 8 requires four points. Oh. Right? Okay. Yeah, we only, we are using, maybe this will make it more clear. We can use these three points. First one, second one, we will use these two. Third one. Then again, we'll have to use. And then finally, we can use. So we'll have to do I1, I2, I3. I four I four. 
So I1 comes out to be 0 0.8438. Four eight three two I two so I two we need to use zero point two and zero point four so uh, between sorry I should write it like this zero point two 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 points we use trapezoidal. So the trapezoidal rule is delta x divided by two, f zero plus f one, dx is, well, it's, a, it's a difference between 0 0.4 and 0 0.2, that's going to be 0 0.2, f zero is 4.53 plus 5.34, Seven zero. Third one. X is between zero point four and zero point five. Again, trapezoidal. Delta X here, well, let me write the formula first. F0 plus F1. So here, I'm just you know using F0, F1, uh, but if you wanted to use continue from F2, you could as well say F3 plus F4. I just wrote down the formula as it is in the notes, just to make it less confusing. So Delta X is 0 0.1. F0 is for I3, 5.34 and 5.88. So zero point five six one zero. Okay, How, there are two. Uh, well, there are, uh, two more. Let me just write the final answer, and I would like you to fill in the blanks uh, as to what I three, I four, and I five is. But I'll give you the final answer. Okay, and then you can check with my answer. Okay, this is just to help you fill the table. Fourth one is between 0 0.5, 0 0.8. Write down which method you're going to use. Write down the formula which you'll use. And then check with my answer. I5, sorry, I, my bad, I4. The formula should be here. And the answer I get for this is one point. My bad, two point zero eight six five. This should be I four. So similarly for the fifth one over here, we have zero point eight X to one point zero. Write down what method you'll use. Note there are three points. I5, write down the formula and check with my answer, which is 1.7957. So, complete. Yourself. Or I will.
Okay, good question. So for the question is for I1. Right here. I have the same question. Am I really sure what you refer to? Sure. Like, yeah. What is, is N, right? So this is N. So N is uh, even in the sense, this is the way it's been understood that there's F0, but you don't really count F0. So there are three points, but N is even. Oh, okay. So, so, so ignoring the first point. Yeah, just go by the, but you always start counting from zero, but then you always look at the last one, which is. Okay, so uh, really, it's like, like assuming that you do that F0 and you like maintain that. Yeah, that uh, yes. And there is a reason for that. You know, what happens with these problems is this, uh, all of these problems which involve the table, you'll see that, you'll see this is happening. You will have points. Uh, there is one thing which is the interval. So if you start counting here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there are five intervals but there'll be six points, which will be five intervals. So that's where the, the sort of the confusion crops in, which is uh, this zero, this makes your life easy because you never count it. So you just associate this one with this one, this two with this two, this five with this five. It happens every single time you have like a binning process. You will have this, there are N plus one points, but N intervals. Sure. So they, they go by the intervals. N is intervals. Are we choosing what method to use and what points for each method? Uh, we, okay, so why did we choose the method? Okay, so here, let's go back. Okay, so we, we have data from zero all the way to 0 0.2. Now, the question is, uh, why did I say decide 0 0.2? I decided 0 0.2 because I have a uniform grid, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then this grid, 0 0.4, is not, uh, this, the grid is sort of discontinued in the sense that the next number from 0 0.2 would be 0 0.3 for this to continue. So I just stop at 0 0.2. So now between 0 and 0 0.2, I notice that there are three points, or there are two intervals, or n is equal to two, and the most accurate curve is the, uh, the most accurate way to do this is, well, Simpsons 3.8 is one way to do it, but Simpsons 3.8, the problem is you require four points minimum. You only have three points. I need to use Simpsons one third, and that's why I use Simpsons one third. Okay, so we are done with this interval. Next we go to, uh, next we just keep marching along, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Now we can't, we have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, the grid size here is 0 0.2, but, from 0 0.4, 0 0.5 is just 0.1. That means that I just can't integrate a non-uniform grid. So I need to stop here. So I need to take these two points and then try to find the area using just these two points. But the only way I can do this is to use the trapezoidal rule, which is more accurate than rectangle rule, which is also an, a candidate. And so I go with trapezoidal rule for this interval. And I just keep doing that. Uh, eventually you'll end up with the fifth one where you'll have three points. So you'll have to again use uh, Simpson's rule. Is, is that, I hope that is clear. Was there really ever a case where you put a tangle? So no, you wouldn't use it. So it was pretty much trap low. Trap is the way reverse. to go. Yeah, you wouldn't, right. You wouldn't use something which is this accurate. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we've got the five uh, integrals. Now we just need to compute the area. So what we were after is one zero, or sorry, it's the work done. Let me write it down that way. The work done is zero one P A T X, but we can pull out A, it's a constant, P D X, but P D X is the sum of all the three integrals. So work done, if you put in the values, which is just right over there, the, the different integrals, you get 
थ्री नाइन थ्री 